everyone and welcome to today's q and a i want to start off by thanking you so much for sending in so many amazing questions so today's question is for students looking to take time off between degrees what advice can you offer to help them stay focused enough to come back if they wish great question so i thought a really fun way to answer this question would be to liken it to a trip so we're going to talk about trip inventory trip itinerary and who your travel buddies need to be so the first thing you're going to want to inventory and journal about are the reasons for your gap year is it because you didn't get into a grad school that you had hoped to or are there financial concerns and you just feel like you need to take a year off to sort of make some money and get yourself organized are there family or health reasons for your gap year so be sure to write the reasons down in your inventory secondly i recommend that you write out the benefits of taking your gap year and that may change as your year progresses because you might actually understand the benefits more as you go through the process then you're going to journal an inventory about any concerns you might actually have about the gap year so this might include getting behind, um, not following the standard order of progress through education, anything like that that might be part of your concerns. So next, I recommend writing about the challenges and the obstacles that you think will be part of the gap year. First, you need to take a really close look at your self-talk, your beliefs, what you think. Is there a certain equation for success that you believe in that you think the gap year might pose obstacles to? Do you believe that time might be running out, that others might get ahead, that you might fall behind? Do you believe that there's only so much space in the world and if you don't plow through all your degrees without resting or kind of allowing life to happen that you might miss out? Is the time of your gap year defined? Is it a one year gap year? Is it a three-year gap year? Um, is it sort of you don't know, you're just finishing up one degree and you're not ready to start the next one and you're just kind of in limbo? Are there challenges and obstacles associated with expectations of family members, teachers, ensemble directors? And not being sure about what your destination is can also be a challenge and an obstacle. So this could include lack of clarity in the moment about what you might actually want to do professionally and how music plays a role in that or how your education in terms of degrees, undergraduate, master's, doctorate might play a role in that. So basically collect your beliefs and then look at what your self-talk is. What are the conversations or the statements that go through your head that are related to any of these beliefs? and then you're going to create affirmations. These are the statements that you're going to pair up with each of these beliefs. So that's the gap year travel inventory part. Let's take a look now at our travel itinerary. This is all about setting your intentions and your desired outcomes. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to take time to just sit down and really think about what your intentions and what your desired outcomes for this period of your journey look like. So let's take a peek at what some of these might include. So let's start with your personal intentions and outcomes. These could be using the gap year to recharge, to sleep, to come back in touch with your own biological rhythm, to diversify your life, to increase your health, to go more deeply into your spiritual practice, to spend more time with family and friends. Musical intentions and outcomes for your gap year include the areas that you're gonna really focus on in your playing, how you would like to grow as an artist, what kinds of things you would like to research during that year, how you would like to grow your listening skills and what kinds of music you'll be listening to and how you're gonna expand your understanding of the repertoire and any specific goals and measuring points that you would have for that year in terms of your musical growth. Another area to set intentions for desired goals and outcomes would be finances. So this includes preparing for the next step. Are you going to try to make a certain amount of money? Is there some debt you're trying to clear away from your education? What kind of financial goals and outcomes are you hoping to realize during the gap year? Another really important itinerary item for the gap year is how you're going to develop your professional portfolio. 
So this is kind of exciting. I mean, you can take this year to really focus on aspects of your resume and your life experience, such as service and outreach in community, because that is actually something that schools will look at. It's something that's just a great way to give back to society. It expands your experience and your awareness. You can also set some professional goals that are related to creating content and developing a social media presence and actually networking in terms of social media and the social media community. How about teaching? You can develop your teaching skills during your gap year, even if that means offering free lessons or showing up to local schools during the fall period where the fifth graders are picking their instruments and maybe the band director needs assistance with starting his flutes off. You can also offer online lessons or try running a studio out of your home. And finally, another really great idea for how to develop yourself professionally during your gap year is computer skills. I mean, what a great opportunity in terms of having the time potentially to learn how to do like video editing and iMovie or some other apps, how to make posters and InDesign. And those are skills that are not only going to benefit you personally as a musician and a professional, but they are skills that you can list in the skills area in terms of software skills of your resume. And that could come in handy in terms of getting an assistantship for grad school or even having some great work opportunities come your way. Okay, so when you take a trip, one of the most important parts of your trip itinerary are where are you going to eat and sleep? Where are you going to feed yourself and recharge yourself? And how are you going to do this during your gap year? So one of the most important things for recharging that I really recommend, especially during a gap year, is finding a way to stay in community. And luckily there are so many ways to do this today in this day and age, no matter where you live, because there is the thing called the online community. And if you're actually watching this video, you probably already are part of an online community. Um, but other ways to recharge and stay part of a community would be to take lessons, to be part of learning groups, to follow the different forums that are being presented online, to reconnect with past teachers and take lessons with them, to find new teachers, to kind of dabble with a bunch of different teachers. And another great idea is to buddy up with your friends. So you could send them YouTube links of your playing and ask them to critique you. You could critique them. You could create a little community where you're feeding each other information and where you feel part of something going on. So let's talk next about what sites you're going to be taking in and visiting during your gap year. Are you going to be seeing the Eiffel Tower of the gap year, for example? And the main thing I recommend for this is use the year or the two years or the undefined period of time to really educate yourself. Homeschool yourself during this time. Come up with a list of things to do. For example, you might decide that you're going to uh, view all of Nina Perlov's YouTube videos on flute technique, or you could immerse yourself in all of the videos on Angela McBurdy's YouTube channel. I'll go ahead in the caption of this video and actually list some great YouTube channels to check out. Next, make a list of some great masters that you're going to listen to and just determine that you're going to listen to every single recording that they ever made. Or how about create a list of the top 10 orchestral excerpts and decide you're going to create a link list of the Boston Symphony playing all of them, of the New York Phil playing all of them, of the Gavant House Orchestra playing all of them, and that you're going to not only listen to them, but actually play along with them during your gap year. The gap year is also a great year to get familiar with extended technique pieces. If you've just finished your undergrad, it might be likely that you're not as familiar with those pieces. So what a great opportunity to homeschool yourself and learn the primary extended technique pieces and become familiar with all those techniques. It would also be great to familiarize yourself with pieces for flute and electronics at this time. The gap year might also be a great year to get ahead on actually taking classes that might affect your next degree. If you're a master's student and you plan on actually moving into a doctorate, you could even start your research for your dissertation during the gap year 
or take some online classes that are going to make your music history exams and your theory exams all the more easy. So we've talked about the travel inventory, we've talked about the travel itinerary, and now we're going to talk about the travel buddies. Yes, create a team. You're going to need a team for your gap year or your gap decade or whatever this period of time is. So who's going to be on your team? So first you want to create a list of personal mentors. These are people who love you, believe in you, like you, and are there for you. And you can literally just say to them, hey, I'm going on this trip. Okay, and I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I'm calling it the gap year, and I just need some people who are on my team, who I can talk to if I'm feeling discouraged, or if I have questions, or if I need some advice. Will you be a travel buddy? And for sure, they will say yes. And I'd say having two or three people would be a really good number for this. Your next travel buddy team are your professional mentors. So these can be former teachers, even high school teachers or undergrad teachers, um, ensemble directors, and anyone else who is a professional in the field who you think would be a great mentor for during this period of time. So you have your travel inventory, you have your travel itinerary, you know who your travel buddies are, and now it's time to head off into the trip. Okay, so during your gap year, number one, you have to stay in the process. So as the little concerns come, or as the not concerns come, any challenges that come, feeling unmotivated might be one of them. You're just gonna stay in the process and try to keep an open mind and think of it as a trip and an adventure. Keep in mind that there are gonna be mostly knowns and some unknowns. Try to stay organized throughout the year, though some of it can be disorganized and organic. But for the most part, I would say just try to follow that itinerary, keep your goals, your intentions, and your desired outcomes in mind. So when you travel, sometimes you run out of money. And so that could be like you're running out of energy during the year. So just keep in mind your resources, Think about how to rejuvenate. Remember that you've decided that there are places where you can eat and sleep. So what does that mean for you? How can you feed yourself? How can you rest? How can you rejuvenate and keep the journey onward? And I would really recommend trying to maintain a perspective of excitement and adventure during the journey. It's going to take a lot of courage. It's going to take a lot of open-mindedness. It's going to take a lot of personal empowerment and direction. It's going to take a lot of trust. And finally, get ready to grow because, hey, it's your life. I mean, whether you're in school or not in school, you're still living life. You're learning, you're growing, you're gonna meet people on your travel destinations. You're gonna expand your horizons. You're gonna catch up on things. You're going to rejuvenate, recharge, maybe become more healthy, become a better flutist, meet new artists, learn things from YouTube, develop your understanding of repertoire. Wow, what an exciting year. My final recommendation for this is view it as something beautiful, positive, trust in the way your life is unfolding, trust in your life journey and make it be the best experience that you possibly can make it be. And guess what? It doesn't end there with the gap year because all of those skills and all of the ways I just talked about actually managing that year are how you should just go through life. And these are skills that you're going to utilize in your profession as a student and in your profession as a professional and in your life as a living human being.